Hey, uh, welcome to another uh, Tech Tips 411 session. Um, today I'm going to be talking about training uh, resources you can use for interactive lessons. So thanks so much for tuning in. If you're watching live, great. If not, uh, you're watching this on uh, replay. Uh, thank you for tuning in. So for those of you that I don't know, and you've just stumbled across this recording, this, this channel, my name is Jennifer Hall, and I'm an educational technology specialist with Atlanta Public Schools. And I'm super excited to just share some tips and tricks and resources during this summer PL series for uh, teachers to prepare for next school year with uh, us continuing with some virtual uh, learning, possibly. So goals for our time today is we're going to explore some tools and apps for creating interactive lessons, and we're going to gain some ideas for creating engaging and interactive virtual lessons. So we're going to talk about a couple of tools today. Um, I just pulled four that we're going to talk about today and give you a couple of ideas of how you might want to use it. So those tools we're going to talk about today include Jamboard, uh, Answer Garden, Wiser, Dot me and Pear Deck. So you might be familiar with one or all of the tools, or maybe you've never heard of any of them, but we're going to talk about ways you might want to use these tools with your students for virtual lessons to uh, make your, you know, Zoom calls, your Google Meets, your, your Microsoft Teams meetings a little more engaging for your learners. Okay. So the first one I want to talk about is Jamboard. And if you're not familiar with Jamboard, it is a really cool web-based uh, whiteboard tool that allows you to collaborate. So I'm going to hop over here and take a look at Jamboard here and um, we'll dive in. So uh, how it works is it's a free tool as part of your G Suite. So it's uh, jamboard.google.com and it's an interactive whiteboard. And I'm going to kind of show you an example of one that I participated in and then show you how I created an activity that could be used in your class. So how Jamboard works, and I'm going to open up this one right here. So how it works is that you can uh, write on it. Um, and this really works if you've got a tablet or a mobile device. So it works great um, for you to use it with, um, if you've got a tablet or a mobile device. I've seen actually where you can pull it up on your computer screen and then use your mobile device for the, the app that's on there to be able to annotate with your finger because if you don't have a touch device. But it works great if you do have a touch device um, or a touch laptop that works with a stylus. This is really cool. Or uh, I talked to my teachers um, the other day about getting a mouse pen, which is actually a cool tool. Um, works like a mouse and a pen. So then you can actually write and it gives you that ability to, to write on a screen. So this was an interactive activity that I participated in. Um, and the question was, what is the purpose of assessment? And I, I did this completely virtually with a, a a Google trainer group and we actually got to add in our sticky notes and responses. So what it looks like is, and I'm actually going to go back here real quick and we're going to start from scratch with a jam so you can kind of create one. So you're going to go to jamboard.google.com. Uh, I'm going to put the links all in the description of the video at the end of this session. So this is a blank canvas. So I can use right here this uh, pen tool to actually annotate and write. And I said it's a little bit easier if you're on a touch device or if you've got that type of a mouse pen. Um, obviously, I can also use this eraser because my scribbling is terrible. Okay. Um, I can use the selector, which allows me to move elements around. Let's go ahead and clean that up right there. Okay. Um, I'm going to give my jam a, a name up here. We're going to call this one uh, just as the demo jam. Okay. Um, and I can save this. Now this works in both your G Suite apps or uh, in your personal Gmail. You have access to this as well. So if I go here, I can also um, add those sticky notes. So that's where I can say, uh, I want to put a little note here. I can pick the color of my note. So this is really cool if you want to do a, just a check-in with your students online um, and they can kind of pick a color using it to say, hey, this is how I'm feeling today. Uh, great for SEL. Just, you know, slap, a, sla you know, put one positive thing that's going on and pick a sticky note and drop it in. And so I'm just going to drop it in there. Uh, and I could keep adding sticky notes, but once I've dropped it, I have the ability of resizing it, moving it, turning it. So I can just drop a bunch of different sticky notes on here in different colors. Um, I can also insert images. And so I can Google search. I can pull uh, resources from a Google Drive. So if you've got a graphic organizer, you could pull that image in and then they can annotate over it or you can pull up photos that you have. Uh, another thing is that there's a laser pointer. So if you're if you're doing this online and it's hard for kids, I'm using a really cool extension 
Chrome extension called um, Custom Cursor that gives me this really cool mouse. And I added that really with doing a lot of online training because it's easier for you to follow that and you can customize that. But I can also choose to use this laser pointer. Uh, and when I choose the laser pointer, um, I, it will let me you know, click on that and you can point and use it. Right now I'm using the cursor option. So these are some options here. I can go up here and I can select uh, backgrounds, change those out, give it lines. So if I, for a math class, I can put some grid lines on here. I can choose just a dark color. So things, uh, you visually impaired students and that white background is really um, harsh on, on their eyes. You can do that as well. So I've created this. What's really cool is, all right, so you made a little digital whiteboard. I can have multiple pages here. So I can keep adding and have multiple pages. So when I set this up, I could say, hey guys, I've got this jam. I'm going to share it with you. You're going to work on, group one's going to work on page one, group two's going to work on page two and so forth so that they can go to their assigned page to work on their task. So I've created my jam. So you want to do a little prep work in advance, or if you're going live and you just need to pull this up and do an example of a math problem, or you're writing out and you're annotating on a sentence, you could do that um, very easily, but you can do a little prep work and have it, have it set up. What I can do now is I can choose to share this file. And when I share this file, I can share that link and I can choose who all has access to this, access to this. I can change whether or not it's in just my school district or if I can share it out. And then I can choose whether or not they have editing rights. That's the important thing. So I just want my kids to watch what I'm doing and you want them to be able to look at it. You can do that. But if you want them to interact and join in, you want to make sure that it's edible and you can share that. And what's really cool, just like all other Google tools, you'll see when people pop in up here and see what they're doing. So it's super cool. So let's look at an example of an activity that I created using Jamboard. So I'm going to go back here. And I was working with a science teacher earlier this year and we were talking about uh, renewable and non-renewable energy. So this could be an activity you do with your students as you're talking about what are different types of energy, renewable or non-renewable. I've already added in here these photos. So you could name a, a team captain as you've shared this out with your students and have that student help you with classification and, and moving these pictures and, and classifying them. Then on the next slide here, I've got one where it's the pros and cons. So you could have them work in groups and discuss options to getting a, you know, what are the pros and cons of using renewable or non-renewable energy? So again, this is just an interactive way in a safe space uh, that students can participate in this. You can see that they're actively in there um, participating in the class. So that's just one example of a tool. If you haven't tried it, definitely check it out. Um, my math teachers have been really enjoying using uh, Jamboard, but I think there's other uh, content areas that definitely could use this tool. Um, and so definitely check out Jamboard. Again, I'm gonna put the links in the description of, of the video uh, after we're done with the session. So next up, another tool I wanna talk about is Answer Garden. I don't know if anyone has heard of Answer Garden, it's a really cool tool that allows you uh, to get feedback. Now there is an app, but we're gonna look at just the web page here where you go to Answer Garden. And what it is, is you're asking yourself, you're asking your students a question. So I'm um, click over here that we got it. And we're gonna create an Answer Garden. Now, super simple, easy. All I need to do is pose a question. So for my question, um, I'm gonna use this one. How do you feel about math? I was doing this, I was online with a teacher earlier doing some planning. And we use this question, how do you feel about math? So for me, I have a math phobia. Um, I'm a little reticent about you know learning math stuff, but I have other students like that's our absolute favorite subject. So I pick that, that's my question. I'm gonna choose whether this is a classroom activity, just a brainstorm. I can give students the opportunity to either have a 20 character response or a 40 character response. So I don't need them to restate what the question is. I want them to say succinctly, you know, using adjectives, how they feel about it, you know, describe uh, what, what they think about math. So I'm going to do 40. Now I can link this and put a password if I want to protect it. I can put my email in here so it remembers. Um, it'll send me a link so I can get back to this. So I'm just going to put that in here real quick. All right. Um, I can do spam filter. I can leave it all lowercase, uppercase. Don't worry about it. I can say how long do I want it available and I'm going to just click create. So now I've got this. Here's my question about uh, Answer Garden. 
on the answer garden. So I'm going to copy this link right here and I'm going to post this one right here into the chat. Cause I got, I got some folks watching live right now. So I'm going to post it in the chat. So for folks, if you want to participate, you can click on that and go ahead and add to our answer garden. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and type an answer here. And my answer is I already had some cause a little anxiety for me. All right. And I'm going to hit enter and it's going to populate on my answer garden. Okay. And it, it goes on there. But then somebody else might say that it is joyous. It brings them joy. They love, they love it. So we're going to go ahead and hit enter here. So it's going to add it to it. So what's happening here is each of these answers are going to populate on here. If you're doing this with your students, the more there's commonalities. So if another, if I put joy, which is very similar, Notice it's it's attaching it right here. It's going, okay, it's right here by that joyous joy. Uh, maybe it causes me uh, to think. All right. I can add in more words. So now this is an anonymous option. I love math. Love it. Okay. I bet you that is Miss Calhoun that just responded right there. I know that was you. All right. So when you add in your responses here, you notice that I'm getting some feedback. So now I've given students a safe place where they can give a response uh inside of an answer garden so you can post this link inside of your google classroom have them respond before your class so that you can review what people said or you can do this live you see it was that simple for me to pose a question and have students provide a response okay so definitely um, a cool tool is answer garden so definitely check that one out so let's take a look at some other interactive tools and, and answer garden as you saw is super simple type up a question pick your settings and go live, um, or you can pre-schedule, you can pre-pair uh, them and have them ready to go when you start class. So it's a great way to kind of gauge your students' feeling in the middle of a um, in the middle of a lesson, uh, kind of like a brain break. Let's let's pause for a minute. Let's switch gears. Let's see how we're feeling about things um, and do it in a safe space. So definitely check out Answer Garden. So the next tool I want to look at is Wiser.me. So Wiser is interactive worksheets. So we keep hearing like, okay, we're all online and we need to make things interactive. Um, and I had teachers that were using this before we even got out for distance learning because they didn't want to copy, you know, 15 million worksheets and hand them out when they can easily send out a digital worksheet and um, have their students engaged that way. So let's take a look at this. So I want to search for um, worksheets because the other thing is I don't need to reinvent the wheel. Okay. So the website is wiser.me. And if you go in there, you can search for topics. So I'm actually going to look for uh, fractions since we're talking about math. Okay. So here are some ready-made ones. So it's kind of a Pinterest style shop for the one that you want. Uh, oh, can you, I'm looking, there's a question. Can you allow students to answer the questions before you post their answers? Oh, on the um, answer garden, as soon as you hit it in there, it goes live. Okay. Uh, and thank you. All right. Look at this. I got, uh, my expert math teacher over here. Look at Miss Calhoun says, I like Wiser Me. Good. Your kids like it? Hopefully they do. Um, it's super cool. And I love that my math teachers are in the house. Miss Blue's here too. She's one of my champion math teachers that is tuning in right now. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to just pick this decimals and fractions one. Okay. And this has now gone from being just a, you know, print out one, I can go in here and it's going to tell me this is for sixth grade. It's telling me it's under fractions and decimals and so forth. Now I, as an educator can copy this. Now I got to make sure I'm logged into my account and it's going to prompt me to do that, I bet. And so you can connect here with Google Edmodo or your Microsoft account. So I'm going to go ahead and connect with my Google account here and I'm going to connect it to this one. Ms. Calhoun says, yes, her kids do love Wiser Me. That's fantastic. That's great to hear. So uh, I, I now want to copy this worksheet. And now since I've copied it, I can uh, I can give some feedback on who all's uh, that I like this, you know, which is kind of cool. Great job. Thank the teacher that shared with this. And then I can go in here and I've got a copy of this worksheet. So now I will point out that there's the free version of Wiser Me and then there's the premium version. So the free version allows you to go in, access any worksheet and there's thousands and they're, and they're being added constantly. The premium version gives you the option to link it to your Google Classroom and to be able to differentiate. So right now I can create a class inside of Wiser Me and push out assignments. But if I want to be able to link it with my Google Classroom, it's $3 a month. 
And that also allows me to differentiate. So let me go down here. I'm going to close out of this. They want to make sure that I'm liking all this good stuff. Did I like this? Yes, I did. We can give some feedback. All right. So there's, there's my actual worksheet right here. Okay. So if I want to go in and I want to change this, I can, I want to edit my copy and I want to make any changes to it. I can do that. All right. Got it. So of course, little, all the little pop-ups here, making the magic happen. All right. So now I have it and I want to go in and make any changes to it. So maybe I'm going to add some sections or I'm going to divide it. I can do that. Now I'm going to go to the review section and I'm going to say, all right, I like everything looks good. I didn't make any changes, but if I wanted to, I could do that. Um, notice this one's match the following fractions. So this is a drag and drop. So I literally am going to be connecting these. So it makes it more interactive. Think old school. You had to draw on your paper, but now I've done it digitally. And now I've got, I'm not having to uh, make all these photocopies. And since we're doing distance learning, this is going to make it a little bit easier for you to push out resources. So next up, I want to go to assign. So right now I can select a class and I've got a demo class in here and I can assign it to that class. Now, um, if I want to assign private worksheets, I've got to make it make mine public, which means anybody can see it. That's part of that uh, premium. I can keep it, keep it uh, secure and just to me. doesn't matter if other folks can see it. I can add multiple classes here. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and select that one more time and assign it. And it's going to push it out there. I can shuffle questions and I do have a little bit of option there. So I can make sure it goes out to that class. Now, the other thing is, is that when I go to classes, I can also choose to link to a Google Classroom if I wanted to do it that way. So I'm going to go back in here. And if I want to add classes, it's going to ask me, do I want to add my own personal class, which is here, add another class. You can do that. And it generates a code or activate Google Classroom. When I do that, it's going to say you need to upgrade your account. And again, that's that uh, $3 a month. So it might be worth it to you to, to, uh, to upgrade. So if I want to just add another class here, I can just uh, includes that one class. So I would just share that class code out and I can um, go in here and edit it. I can change the grade and then I can share, share it directly from there. So I'm curious because I see that Ms. Calhoun is still tuned in here. Hopefully, uh, have you upgraded? I'm curious if you've upgraded and are you're paying the three bucks a month. Or are you getting what you need out of it without having to upgrade? I'm just curious. So Wiser.me lets you create those interactive worksheets and push them out to your learners. And then they would come back into your class and you can check the work that they've done. Since I don't have any students, I can't show you the backside of that, but definitely investigate and take a look at Wiser.me. So let's look at our next one that I want to talk about, which is um, Pear Deck. I'm curious if anyone's using Pear Deck. So Pear Deck is a really cool tool that lets you take a simple PowerPoint. They've, they've integrated with PowerPoint. It started with Google Slides. I've got a Google Slides presentation, just a couple of slides about, well, nope, you upgraded. Okay. I'm sure that, I, yep, she upgraded. Miss Calhoun said she upgraded. And apparently she says she's loving it. The kids are loving it. And it was worth that upgrade. Awesome. Thanks for letting me know. So if I look at this, I've got uh, the life of William Shakespeare. I've got two paragraphs here. So if I was just going to present this to my students and we're talking about William Shakespeare, I might want to jazz this up and, and see that the students are paying attention because especially when you're doing distance learning and you're, and you're talking to your students online and it's really hard to gauge whether or not they're really paying attention because they could be looking at the screen, but they could have another tab open and they could also be using, uh, you know, another screen and they're watching their favorite show on Netflix or whatever. So we want to be able to make sure that they're engaged in the uh, lesson. I love it here. All right. Miss Watson says Pear Deck is amazeballs, amazeballs. I love it. All right. I got here. Miss Nunnick says yes to Pear Deck. Fantastic. So there, let's, let's take a look at how that works. So you would go to PearDeck.com. Again, I'm going to put that link in the description and you guys can create your account and you're going to link it to your Google account. But once you have your, uh, once you've set that all up, you just click up here to this Pear Deck icon and it's going to say, all right, so you want to go to Pear Deck and you want to take this lesson and add these questions in here. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. So, all right, so I've got these question options here. I can ask text questions, choice questions, number questions. I can embed a website here. I can add a draw question or there's a draggable option. They also have a template library, which is super cool. I can go in and I don't have to start from scratch and design a really cool uh, 
uh, template on my own, I can use theirs. So what's going to be cool is that I can say, all right, I want to add a, um, a choice question and it's going to pull it up and it's going to say, all right, you want to add a multiple choice question. And so I can ask what are my, what are my options are? So I can ask this question verbally or I can have the question be on the screen as well. So I'm just going to say, uh, 15, 64, I'm trying, all right, 1564 would be, it would be beneficial to put the right date here. 1564, uh, 1616, and I'm going to put in 1602. And I'm going to be talking about when was Shakespeare born, okay? And I could add multiple ones, and I'm going to update my slide. And now it's going to add a question to my slide. Magic is happening. Let the little pair do its magic. So you'll notice now on my slide where I've got this, there's now an interactive feature. So if I'm presenting this to my students, when I get to that slide and I'm talking about it to them, I can say, all right, guys, I got a question for you now. What year was Shakespeare born? And that question is going to be there and they're going to respond because they've looked at the text and they're answering. That way I can see that they're paying attention. OK, I can also add in drawing options so I could put a matching thing where they need to connect uh, ideas, which is really cool for science and math. Um, I can choose a number option where they need to put in a number response. So if they have to solve a math problem. Um, is really cool as well. So I can add in these different types of questions, but I don't need to start from scratch. I can choose their template library. So let's take a look at that. Because I have a lot of teachers that like, well, I have umpteen million either PowerPoints or they have a ton of Google slide presentations that they usually use. And they kind of, you know, uh, go through the slides and, and they're not really gauging whether or not their students are paying attention as well. Because think about it, when we're in a classroom and we're doing a lecture and it's direct instruction, you can gauge students, you know, engagement by, you know, are they paying attention? Are they are they giving me eye contact? It's not as easy to do that in a virtual learning environment. So we've got to do things that are going to be like, OK, guys, I'm there's a pulse check. I'm checking in. You got to respond. OK, so I'm going to take a look at some options here. We've got at the beginning of a lesson. So as you're creating your slide deck, you'd be like, all right, it's the start of my class. I need that hook. Um, I can go in here and say beginning of a lesson. I want to um, get started here and I can pick, is it a text slide? Is it just a thinking? Um, is it a drawing slide? So draw two types of things you already know about it, today's topic. Super easy. I don't have to make the template. It automatically drops in there. So if I'm going to start talking about, um, I'm going to throw out, you know, uh, figurative language and be like, all right, what do you already know about figurative language? I can add in here, you know, I can draw a picture that represents that. I can jot down my notes as a student to show what I already know before we engage in the content. So there's text slides where they get to type in text responses. And then I also like this draggable. Where, how are you feeling on the spectrum? This serves two purposes. One, at the end of a session, um, at the end of a session that I can gauge how my students are feeling after we've encountered new content. Or I can be like, how are you feeling before we even start? So um, kind of gauging them. So this really touches on that SEL component and allows students to participate. And I've got a question here. Is this a Google form of Nearpod? And um, great question. Actually, uh, it is very similar. There's been some comparisons between Nearpod and Pear Deck. They have similar features. Um, it's just a little bit different because Nearpod has the lesson delivery, but it's inside of Nearpod. And you can look for... Um, you can look for content that's already created, lessons are already created on their premium platform in Nearpod. And Pear Deck does have a premium version, which gives you some more data, but really you are creating the content. You're, you're not searching for a pre-made lesson. You're using these templates inside of lessons you're creating. And it started out as a support for Google tools, but um, they've also recently in the last, I want to say six months, added the ability to use Pear Deck with, um, online versions of uh, PowerPoint. Okay. Uh, and I, I see your Kelly says, I don't think it's a Google tool, but it is an extension. So there's two parts to it. You're going to um, install the add-in when you sign up for Pear Deck, you're going to say, Hey, I want to attach this to you. Log in and you'll in insert the, um, you can use it inside of your slide deck. And then there's another extension that you're going to want to get. And I'll again, put this all in the description is that you want to make sure you get the power up option, especially since we're going virtual. It allows you to embed videos and play videos um, and it works in your browser a little bit better. Uh, Miss Blue says, can I use Pear Deck on a PowerPoint? Yes, they do have an integration now with PowerPoint. I've not tried it. 
I've, uh, my experience with Pear Deck has been using it with uh, Google Slides because that's where it started. But yes, they did push out integration. If you're using, my understanding, if you're using an online version of PowerPoint, so PowerPoint online through Office 365, you can use Pear Deck with that as well. Great question. Awesome. Lots of great questions. So notice I was picking, let's go back here. That was at the beginning of a lesson. Maybe if I'm during the lesson, this is going to be like the assessment piece. So I can ask true false questions. I can do some more draggable ones. I can uh, have students draw on the slide and then agree or disagree as you're talking about different topics. This is really good for social studies. If you're talking about historical events and, and how they might have uh, impacted different things and you can say, all right, do you agree or disagree that this was a significant event? And you can have students participate there as well. Uh, you can have an instruction slide. Um, you can do, I love this. They've got a stretch break. Let's be honest. When we're doing a session and I know it's difficult to go for a long period of time in front of a screen, especially, you can definitely use that break in there. Right, right, we're going to take a break here, guys. And, and, and by putting that in there, you're making sure that you've integrated that into your lesson. Then there's also multiple choice. Those are all in the middle of the lesson. And then they've got some templates for end of the lesson as well. So we can go in here and do a couple more options and kind of like, how are you feeling after we've encountered this content today? So what's really cool is I had teachers that were using Pear Deck during live lessons in the classroom face to face. So, it, I mean, it was initially designed as a tool for that, that you're in the that you're you know, introducing new content and your students have devices in your classroom and you have them actively participating. But now that we've gone virtual and we don't know what the new school year is going to look like, we're looking for tools that we can use in those hybrid classes, in those distance learning classes. And you can pull, you know, pull this in. You've got your content. You probably already got a PowerPoint slide or you've already got a Google slide deck that you've shared with your PLC that has all your content. Just drop in a couple of these um, questions throughout your presentation. And it's really cool. I see lots of people right here. Uh, that are loving uh, the stretch break, which I think is super, super cool right there. Ms. Jordan says yes for the stretch break. We've got to do it. I mean, we've got to be mindful of working with our students, um, you know, online. It's it's really hard. And even with me planning these sessions is I don't want to go too long because let's be honest, after 30, 30 plus minutes, y'all are out. We got to have a break. So I definitely love that that's in there and, you, and it's going to remind you to go in here and add those different elements, okay? So let's go ahead here and go back so I can add in any of those elements. So once I've added those elements, then all you gotta do is click to start your lesson. And when I start my lesson, it's going to open up. I can, now, I've got the option of a student-paced mode, which means that my students are gonna work at it at their own pace, which is really, really, really cool. I do believe that that is a premium feature, but right now it's been open because Pear Deck opened up all of their options with uh because we've been out for uh, covid so i'm not sure don't quote me that the student pace activity will be available after the school year technically ends for everyone um but that is i know was a premium feature that is a great option for centers or group activities if you want them to work on something as homework or you want it to be a pre-activity before you get involved so you're going to do this if you're doing a live lesson with your students you're going to select that instructor paced activity so now it's going to sync it and it's going to make sure all this stuff and, and it's uh, it's going to make log in. Let's see here. I'm going to log in with this one. Uh, nope. We want to log in with that one. Too many identities. Uh, let's see here. We're going to log in with the other one and see if it's going to cooperate. There we go. Magic is happening. It had, it had to figure out which one I wanted to be. Let's see here. So it'll load the presentation and then what's going to happen is it gives me this option for students to join. So you're going to give that option right there. So there is a teacher dashboard uh, that really levels up and gives you a lot more data. That's part of that premium option. Uh, but you're still going to get the data and seeing your students respond live. Think of this as that opportunity of when you're conducting a lesson and you're saying, hey, guys, you know, I just need to do that pulse check. And you would have done this in a, in a regular classroom and you might have asked that question verbally. Now you're just using Pear Deck as that tool. So it gives me a code. So I've got, and I love this, WWHMF, but it's giving me warm watermelons, help misty flashlights. Helps out our younger learners all the way to our high schooler kids. are like, oh, what letters am I using? So kids right here uh, will then connect to join. 
And then what'll happen is that pair piece is going to show on any slide that I've added a question to. So when I get to that slide, automatically it's going to pop up on students option. So this really works. You can present it on your screen, but they're also going to see it on their own device when they log in on another screen. Okay. So that's how you use Pear Deck, which is super, super cool. So we're not going to upgrade right now. All right. I'm going to go ahead here. It's loading it on my other screen. Perfect. So those are the four tools that I wanted to talk about. And I'm going to hop back over here. We talked about Jamboard. We talked about some ways you can use it as an interactive whiteboard. We talked about Answer Garden for that brainstorming open response. Um, we talked about Wiser Me with the interactivity um, of old school worksheets, but taking them online. And we just wrapped up talking about Pear Deck and how you can take a Google Slides presentation or a PowerPoint presentation and level up by adding questions, whether it's, you know, starter questions, mid lesson questions, or that closing out and adding that in to make your lesson a little more engaging. Okay. So I did want to um, just check in, see if there were any questions in the chat. And I super appreciate that you spent a little time learning about some resources for interactive lessons. I did, I, I'm thrilled that you found this session that we're in right now, but I do want to point out I've got sessions going on all during the month of June, uh, each day at 2 p.m., streaming live on both uh, YouTube and Facebook. So if you're tuning in, I so appreciate your time. Uh, yes, thank you. Miss Watson says that the student pace for Pear Deck is available now for students. That's what I thought. It's available right now because they open it up. So many companies have opened up their premium options, but I don't know if that will still be available at the start of the school year. Yes, thank you for that. So uh, here are those PD sessions that are coming up for uh, the next couple of weeks. So please join me if you if you can at 2 p.m. live. I'll be streaming and you can watch the archive later on, both on either Facebook or YouTube. Um, so please check that out. I so much appreciate your time. Hopefully you got maybe one tool, maybe two or an idea of something you can do with your students to level up your sessions and your virtual lessons with your students um, while we're working on distance learning. Thank you guys so much for your time. I appreciate you. If you're watching this uh, on repeat, you are so awesome. And thanks for checking it out. If you found this session valuable, uh, please subscribe to my channel. And if you uh, really liked it, give it a thumbs up, like, give me some comments in the chat and uh, I will see you guys on the next one. Thanks so much.